Danny Roderick is one of the most interesting, influential, and also controversial thinkers in development economics today. He was born and grew up in Turkey. He spent a lot of his career teaching at Harvard University, and in general I think of Roderick as someone who draws on political economy, history, a variety of social science disciplines to challenge the prevailing wisdom about a lot of what leads to economic development. He's also one of the most engaging and readable writers in all of the development field. One of Roderick's core ideas is the notion that countries which do best by globalization are those countries which do not play by the classic free trade rules. Roderick often cites the case of China, which has grown at a rapid pace for most of the last 30 years, yet China has not been a country with free trade, it has not been a country with the free flow of capital, and Roderick compares this to the Latin American nations, which in his view came closer to following the orthodox recommendations, and Roderick points out that in terms of economic growth, China has in fact outperformed Latin America. Roderick challenges what is sometimes called the Washington Consensus, the notion that free trade and free movement of capital and fiscal consolidation are the path toward further economic growth. To present a few of Roderick's perspectives in bullet point form, he believes that the benefits of free trade are generally overrated by most other economists, though he doesn't deny that free trade can have benefits. He believes there's not really a strong case for capital market liberalization, he fears that free capital markets lead to a kind of whipsaw effect, excess volatility in times of macroeconomic instability. As mentioned, he thinks a lot of the pro-market reforms of the 1980s and 1990s have disappointed and that, in fact, they were oversold to begin with, even though, if on net, they may have been good ideas. And in general, Roderick tends to see the state and the market not as opposites, but rather as complements that you get stronger markets by having a stronger state, and often you get a stronger state by having stronger markets. You can think of this as challenging a lot of the terms of many debates, which tend to pose it in terms of the state or the market or government versus the market. You can think of Roderick as an economist who often is very skeptical about pure economic theory or the notion that there's some single, unique, universal growth path that all nations need to follow. In general, he's against the idea of one-size-fits-all. He believes in a diversity of recipes for growth. He favors policy diversity and experimentation across different nations so we can see what works. And in general, he's suspicious of attempts to impose a single vision of how to create growth through, say, treaties and multilateral institutions. He believes that very often national sovereignty people trying their own vision of what will work for their country will tend to give you better results. Roderick's famous trilemma poses some very important problems for policymakers. He takes three ideas. The first is the nation-state as the locus of political control. The second is deep economic integration across nation-states. And the third is democratic politics. Roderick argues that you cannot have all three of those at the same time. One way to think about this trilemma is that if you do have very deep economic integration, your economy is so connected to other economies and indeed other polities that you are no longer master of your own economic destiny. How much you can tax may be limited because resources can move to other nations. How much you can inflate may be limited. What kinds of domestic policies you may pursue. How large a welfare state you might wish to have may be limited. And in all these ways, Roderick points out that as the world globalizes more and has deeper economic integration, there's a kind of disjunction because nation states are still relying on democratic politics, but democratic politics aren't necessarily in control. The real control, perhaps, is being exercised through this nexus of international relationships which can bind countries really quite closely. Danny Roderick is also one of the most accessible economists, so you can follow him at Twitter at this address. He tweets frequently, sometimes in Turkish, I should add. Just Google to his blog, which as of 2012 was not so active, but it has a lot of back entries, and he may someday start blogging more again. Just Googling his name brings you to his homepage. It brings you to a lot of papers, uh, many of which are extremely accessible and not necessarily very technical. And he has a large number of short articles in a kind of op-ed style. 
and you can reach those just by googling Danny Roderick Project Syndicate. I very much recommend that you read some of Danny Roderick in his own words.